QuickBooks Online 2023 Home Office Expense Tracking Method 1 Adjusting Entry. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle so we can open up one of the favorite reports on the left hand side. That being the balance sheet. Let's tab to the right and down to the reports on the left again, this time opening the other favorite report, that being the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement. Closing the hamburger up top and we'll change that range from a 10123 to 123 and run it January to December, running it, tabbing to the left, closing the hamburger, scrolling up and change the range to the same, a 10123, tab 123123 and running it. Then we're going to tab to the left. We're thinking about a home office, how we can do our data input into our QuickBooks system to make the tracking of the home office deduction for a sole proprietor reporting on a Schedule C for federal income taxes in the United States as easy as possible. So normally what's going to happen here is you might have the bank feed set up and you might have certain things that you are paying just like every other type of thing. You're assigning an expense account out for them and those things could include things like the utilities or the rent on the on the home or the mortgage interest or the uh, property taxes and you're just going to assign them to an expense account is the easiest thing to do and so that's what we'll start off with we'll, we'll imagine we're entering these in the place and we're just going to assign them to the appropriate expense account even though we know that there's going to be a business and personal component to these because i'm paying for the whole bill of utilities and i need to assign some of it to the business side of things so let's mirror the bank fees by just going to the plus button and entering an expense form so we'll just do this with a good old expense form and we're gonna say that, let's say the first one is the utili utility, uti ut let's say gas company, let's say gas company, boom. And we'll add that generic gas company that we're paying. And let's say that happened on 01323. Hold on, 01323. And we will say that we're just going to generically put that into utilities. Utility. So there's our utilities expense. And we'll say, I'll just put one in for the entire year. So I'll say this was like, like uh, $750 for the entire year, let's say. And then we're going to say add, let's say add another bill, new bill. Let's say this is going to the the gas company or I already did the gas company electric electric company boom save it we'll just put the same date and we'll say this also i'm just going to dump it into utilities utilities just putting those two in there i break out the phone bill usually you but i'll put the gas and the electric to the utilities and let's say that that was uh that that was 550 and we'll say all right save and new and then let's say we had the the rent so we have the landlord landlord the lord of the land for crying out loud these lords and ladies driving you crazy oh gotta pay the landlord all right and then we'll say that that's gonna be for uh rent let's say that's the rent 
expense. It's not garage rent. I'm just going to call it rent. I'll set up a new account. Just an expense account. We would see these come through the checking account. We'll just have an expense account for the rent. Now, this, of course, would only be the case if we're renting the property. Let's say that comes out to a fairly significant amount. If we did it for the whole year, let's say it comes out to 24000 that I'm going to put for the whole year. So then I'm going to say save a new. Now, note that if you had your own home and you owned the home, you wouldn't be paying the landlord. You'd be your own landlord, but you'd still probably have to pay the mortgage company. So you'd have to pay the bank let's say. Now you wouldn't have the rent and the mortgage at the same time, but let's just see the two circumstances you might have owning versus renting. And so we'll say we're paying the bank now for the bank. And usually there's going to be a principal versus interest portion. So again, let's put a fairly significant amount here and say that we had the bank that we're going to pay. We have possibly a loan reduction amount that's going to be going down. And let's say that was for, uh, let's say that was for, you know, 20,000. And then we're going to have an interest portion. Interest. Expense. Expense. And that's the deductible portion. And we're going to put that to an expense. Part of it may be deductible. And I'll just put it to other business expense and interest expense. And you might put on the mortgage. Let's put for the mortgage might not spell that right it's got a spell check of course it does fix it then if you can't spell that's what the spell checkers for spelling is not necessary these days so let's go ahead and do that and then you might have like property tax so if i save a new you might pay the government the government big gov big gov wants their 10 percent so we're going to say, all right, got to pay the big gov. And then we're going to say that that's going to be, let's just say that that's going to go to property taxes. Boom. And we'll say that that's going to be the expenses, property taxes. We'll just say other business expenses. And let's say that that was 6,000, something like that. And those things would be coming through the bank feeds and we'll, we'll save and close that one. So something like that, that'll give us a good example. If I go back on over to my P and L then, as we construct our profit and loss, we're gonna have uh, our expenses for you know the property taxes, the rent, the utilities. Now, one thing that we might want to do is try to house these expenses under a, a parent category of like home office expenses so that we can basically see them in one place. So the way we can do that, let's go to the first tab and say, I'm gonna go down to my accounting and here's our chart of accounts. Now, when you first get the chart of accounts from QuickBooks, they're gonna put all kinds of accounts down here, which might or may or may not be categorized the way you want them. But, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I delete the chart of accounts oftentimes to try to build my own chart of accounts because of their massive chart of accounts but you could look at what they give you and see if they house in a similar way these kind of home office expenses but the way i'm going to do this i'm going to make a parent account new and i'm going to say this is going to be an expense account and we'll just say it's going to be an expense and i'm going to just call it a tax line uh home office office i'll just say i'm not going to worry too much on the tax line because I don't find that to be completely helpful at this point in time. Hopefully at some point they'll be better. That'll be more useful. But right now I'm just going to say home office expenses. Boom. And so let's save that. And then the ones that I just set up, I'm going to put them under that, that category. So I'm going to go ahead and find these that I set up. I put in here under the expenses. I got the interest, so I'm gonna edit that one. And let's make that a subcategory of the home office. So we have the home office here. So I'll pick that one, the home office, and then we'll say, okay, let's save it. And I'm gonna say, 
Yes. Do it. Just do it, man. So now we got the home office. Then we got the fees. We had the repairs. This is all the auto stuff. And then Amazon charges. And I've got to go to the next page here. Next page. And then I've got uncategorized. So here's my utilities. Let's go into that one and edit the utilities. And I'm going to say that this one I'm going to put under the home office again. So home office. Boom. Let's do that one and save it. So here's the property taxes. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Edit property taxes. Uh, I'm going to put that under the home office. Boom. Home office for the property taxes. And yes, same thing for the rent. So I'm going to pick up the rent again, edit it. And I'll put that under the home office. Okay. Yes. Okay. So then I'm going to go over to my income statement and let's run it and say, okay, so this is what we have thus far. So now we've got this information nice and housed under the subcategory of the home office expenses. So as I do this data input, I'm going to recognize the fact that that number is probably high, of course, for my business expenses, because I need to allocate them between the business and professional. But this number might be necessary to help to populate the tax return so that the tax return can break out those those allocable expenses between the business and professional. So I kind of want the entire number here in some way, shape or form. So the tax software can help to do that calculation, even if I want to mirror that calculation in my system as well. So remember, if we did it, if we did a normal calculation for like a home office, we would think that we would get a percentage of these expenses if these were were expenses that were indirect so let's say the percent was 30 percent let's take we we take our office square footage compared to our total square footage for example and we come up to like 30 percent now we could say i'm going to apply that out before i give it to my my tax professional or possibly do it on a monthly basis saying this is my total number and then i'm just going to break out 30 percent uh as like an adjustment a tax adjustment so i can kind of see the adjustment each time frame uh, or I, or I might do the tax return first and use this method to kind of uh, do the reconciling entries between the tax method and the bookkeeping method. So I'm going to use the class tracking. You might be able to do a similar thing with tags if you don't have the class tracking, but let's turn our class tracking on. We turned it on in a prior in prior sections, but the way to turn it on, let's go to the first tab as you go to the cog up top, you go to the accounting and setting. And then in the advanced tab, we want to take a look at uh, the the categories here. So we're in the categories within the categories. You've got the class tracking on. I'm not going to turn this on to warn me every time I enter a data input because I'm not putting a class on every transaction. I'm just using it for my adjustings at this point. Uh, oftentimes when we use class tracking, we want to put a class to every transaction. We'll take a look at methods that we're going to use that as well, but we got it turned on. We're using the default one to each row, and then I'm going to save it. Make sure you save it before you hit done. And then you can check it to make sure it's working by adding like an expense form. And you should have another field here for class tracking. So now you got your class tracking on the right. So it is on. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that 30% of this is business versus uh, versus the the personal. So I'm just going to break this out. And we're going to say, let's just say that I'm going to say then of this 46,300 times 0.30%, we're going to say 13,890 uh, is going to be the business portion and the, the rest, the difference is going to be personal. Now you might say from a bookkeeping standpoint that I should put a draws. You could say that the personal half should be draws. We'll take a look at a method that we can do that. We can put it to draws, but it's kind of nice to be able to see it, the total number here on the income statement. There's other ways we can get the total number, but we might need to give that total number to the tax professional, not just the business part of it, but we might also want to track the business part or after doing the taxes, put the business part in here, possibly 
to help us to kind of do a reconciliation between the tax and the business. Now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm actually gonna say that there's the business portion. So I'm gonna remove from this the personal half. So I'm gonna say minus the 46300, or you can say if 30% is business, 70% would be personal. 46300 times 0 0.7, there's the personal part. So I'm gonna turn the class tracking on by hitting the drop down and sort by classes and run it. Now we did this in a prior section or course with the auto expenses. So we're gonna do a similar type of thing here. I would like to put another account, which is just gonna be for the home office accounts, which will break out the tax adjustment. So then, and so then we're gonna have the, the amount that's appropriate uh, for taxes and we will have the total amount that includes everything uh, as well. And so that we have this kind of reconciliation uh, within you know the income statement. So we'll do a similar kind of process here. Let's go to the first tab to do the journal entry. We'll just hit the drop down, and we're gonna say we have a journal entry and it would be at the end of the year normally. So let's just do it at 12, 31, two, uh, two, three. And let's say that we had then the new account home. I'm just gonna make an account home office, office tax adjustment account. And you could use the same accounts, but I think it's even less intrusive to the bookkeeping to make an, another account that just has your adjusting entries. Although you could put the adjusting entry to the actual accounts involved because we're gonna break them out by class. But I'm gonna say this is gonna be an expense type of account. And I'm gonna say home office. I'm, the subcategory, I'll pick a subcategory, business expense. I'm gonna make it a sub expense of that home office expense again. So the home office, that's the key. Where did it go? Don day, don day, home off. There it is. Okay. So let's, uh, let's save it. I think that's correct. And then the amount we're going to put in here is the adjustment of the three, two, four, one, zero adjust for home office. Let's just say tax entry adjust for home office. And then the other side's gonna go to the same account. So it's just gonna go in and out of the same account. Home office tax adjustment. I'll have the same description. And then we just gotta get which way is it is it going. I'm gonna assign a class to do this. So I'm gonna assign the class to this one. So we're gonna say, this is the adjusting entry. Now, if you don't have an adjusting entry, you can add a class called tax adjustment. This is your tax adjustment column, which is gonna show up another column. So this will just go in and out of the same account, no impact on the, on the income statement at the end of the day, but it'll break out between those two columns, giving you kind of an adjusting entry column. So let's save it and close it and see if it does what we hope that it would do. If I go on over to the tax worksheet, I can say run it and then scrolling on down, we are in the home office and you can see here, it just goes in and out. Here's the new account. It's in the same subcategory, so it's not scattered all over the place. That's why it's nice to have them grouped into a parent account that are all related to this, everything that's gonna go into that home office calculation. And then it just goes in and out. So there's no impact on the end result here. The account just zeros back out. So if I ran a normal profit and loss like this and just said, I want the totals, then no, no problem. You just got this account with a zero in it. And so it doesn't really, it's not intrusive in that way. And if I then say that I put my classes back on, then scrolling down, we've got it going uh, in and out. And instead of adjusting these accounts, each of them, which we could have done, because that might give you a little bit more detail, but we don't really need it. We, we put it in its own account. So it's not, a, not even messing up those GL accounts really, which is easy to do if you have them grouped under uh, the, the home office group. And then the total over here is like the bookkeeping amount that, that includes the entire expenses and then this is the amount that has been reduced, which only includes 
the expenses related to the business portion, which we said was 30%. So 46,300 uh, divided by 0.3. Uh, hold on a sec. <laughs> 46,300 times 0.3 is the 13,890. And this is the, the personal side of things. So it's a nice little it's a nice little method that you could do on on your own if you wanted to make like an adjusting entry to break out the business versus personal and you could give this to your tax professional and they would have or you can do your taxes yourself and you would have everything you basically need because when they enter the data into the system they don't just need the business the business number they might need the full number so they can properly do the calculation of the square footage calculation, but they should come out to the same result of that 13,890. So you can kind of give yourself a little bit of an estimate here by saying, you know, this is the business uh, portion versus the personal portion, but still be able to give your tax professional the entire thing if you wanted to, or if you are a tax professional or you do your own taxes or something like that, you can use this as a nice little worksheet inside of QuickBooks to be able to say, hey, look, uh, if if I get audited later, I can make myself a little worksheet to say, this is the full number before I had the allocation between, between business and personal. And then here's the allocation so that you have a nice cash flow that's going into all the same accounts and you have this nice adjustment and you can say, hey, look, this was my number uh, without the adjustments. And then here's the number for net income that should tie in to my schedule C. And then this tax adjustment basically represents the adjusting entries. And you can do it all here instead of like what normally happens when you get more complex tax returns and even a basic schedule C gets fairly complex is that you need another worksheet like Excel oftentimes to help you with a worksheet like this. And so maybe you can kind of do this uh, in in QuickBooks, and then you can possibly run the reports of the adjusting entries with your notes on it for your tax schedule and, and everything is kind of inside the the system, which is kind of nice. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you can imagine doing this adjusting entry monthly so that you can so that you can kind of have this breakout uh, between the 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 business and non business on a monthly if you run it on this format. Uh, or you can do it perpetually by imagining you have your bank feed set up and then you might be able to make rules so that they automatically break out between the classes as you do the data input. Uh, or you can imagine using these classes to have a whole class versus that's business versus uh, personal, which is another common format for small businesses that a lot of bookkeepers don't like, but it can, it can work fairly good for a small business sometimes. Or you can think about having this um, amount here be in the format of draws because this is really on the personal side. So if these are your business books, you can put it in the system and have the other side go into the balance sheet account as draws. So there's pros and cons to each of those methods. So we'll dive into a little of the pros and cons of those in the future. But I just this nice little worksheet right here is kind of nice because it gives you everything like in one place right it gives you it gives you the the full amount uh it gives it a breakout of each category so you can input it into the tax return and it gives you the breakout of the personal versus the the tax uh, deductible side of things and it gives you your nice little worksheet that might be useful in the event of an audit happening like three years later or something